20 years ago, when Blake Moreau was still a younger police officer, he was investigating the Andersons, a wealthy tycoon family for child trafficking, which involved the kidnapping of runaway teenagers who are used for hunting games. And this had been going on for years. Blake Moreau was going for the head of the Anderson family and his wealthy associates like him. In fact, the evidence against him was overwhelming. And when Blake Moreau and his officers came to harass him, not being able to face the shame he had brought to the family name, he took the easy way out by ending his own life by hanging himself as his son witnessed his death. In retrospect, this was Lord Nemesis relating the story live on air for the whole world to hear. It was a big scandal for the Anderson family. No one would do business with them and the Anderson empire was crumbling. Plus, life was unbearable for young Matthew Anderson, whom Lord Nemesis claimed to be. The worst part for Matthew Anderson was that his mother was also involved in kidnapping runaway teenagers for hunting games and was immediately sent to the electric chair to face death for her heinous crimes. The young Matthew Anderson was later adopted by the new head of the Anderson family, his saintly, self-righteous, God-fearing, staunch Catholic uncle Howard Anderson. And Howard Anderson tried his best to put young Matthew Anderson on the straight path. But as they say, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. After a while, young Matthew Anderson was bored of his uncle's holy adult behavior, which led him to run away from home and travel the world with his little inheritance. On his way, he met the vilest, sadistic, megalomaniac, deranged, insane in individuals, or should I call them criminals? They taught him all the vilest things you ever teach a child his age. By the age of 12, he was a gang lord. At 15, he was the largest exporter of illegal drugs in Asia. And at 23, he was the head of an ancient death cult from Iran, once Mesopotamia. Now, he is back home to honor his mother's dying wishes, which was to avenge and kill Blake Maru for the death of his parents. You should be aware that when Lord Nemesis is committing crimes, it is viewed life worldwide for he attaches recording cameras to his mask for all to see. And his memo operandi is that he goes into a city that has the lowest crime rate. Then he hires the best of the best criminals in that city to cause a lot of disruption by committing crimes in different locations of the city by promising to pay them millions and millions of dollars. And don't forget, Lord Nemesis is no matter for he's proficient in every step he takes as he trusts no one. No one knows his hideout. Even his hired thugs don't know the location of their hideout for they were blindfolded to the place. Lord Nemesis was meticulous, so he was always five steps ahead of his adversaries. It's like he's writing a script directing the motion of things and knowing how it will end without fail. He was like the Nostradamus of villains. Lord Nemesis is so benevolent with his act of criminality that before committing any atrocity, he releases a riddle that must be solved before a deadline given. And before committing crimes, he waits a while to see if the chief of police is smart enough to solve his puzzles. And if he doesn't solve it by the deadline, he and his hired thugs strike. And they strike hard. This was hard and tense for the chief of police, Blake Moreau. As he gets closer to apprehending Lord Nemesis and his hired thugs, it comes to fail. And this is frustrating for him. Question, what gets wet when drying? Answer, an explosion at the Redskin Stadium. And this act by Lord Nemesis and his hired thugs cost a lot of lives. Question. The more you take, the more you leave behind. Answer, the theft of the Hope Diamond, as this diamond was extracted from India and it's worth $300 million. Question, what fastens two people but catches one? Answer, the battered bodies of two spinsters. Lord Nemesis and his hired thugs turned the city of Washington red. It was a bloody fiasco, none that had been seen before. Lord Nemesis was unpredictable. Despite him giving clues to his crimes, his arrogance was next to none and he left the chief of police, Blake Moreau, in a tight corner. This was frustrating for Blake Moreau and this frustration forced him to visit Howard Anderson, for which he accused him of sponsoring his nephew, Matthew Anderson, the master alias Lord Nemesis. Immediately, Howard Anderson refuted the accusation as they had been friends for the past 20 years. Not 
only that, they are both Catholics and even take Holy Communion together. And you have to understand Blake Moreau's perspective, for he was his flesh and blood. And as they say, blood is thicker than water. In retrospect, Howard Anderson has spent over a billion dollars trying to make up for his brother's sin and more to wipe the stain of the family name and nothing would please him to see his nephew apprehended. Lord Nemesis's atrocities had gone far and wide and it was the talk of the news as Washington faced unpredictable terror. He had released another riddle to be solved by the chief of police and a deadline had been given. Top generals and agents from top security agencies held a meeting in the Pentagon and some of the generals who were paranoid had a suspicion that Howard Anderson might be hiding Lord Nemesis for in our reality, he was his flesh and blood. Still, the chief of police assured them that there wasn't any clue that led to the Andersons, for they were as terrified as everyone in Washington. Since they don't know the true identity or whereabouts of Lord Nemesis, Blake Moreau suggests that the whole city be wiretapped, just in case one of his hired thugs slipped up on the phone. And as they tried to get closer to the clues of Lord Nemesis's next target, most of them in the room got the answer wrong and time was taken. And suddenly, the chief of police, Blake Moreau, solved the riddle, for the answer was the Pentagon. And before he could finish his statement and explain how he arrived at the answer, everyone in the room began to fall to their death. They were choking. The only two standing was Blake Moreau and his partner, Sergeant Lee. It gets worse. Everyone in the Pentagon began to fall to their death. This mystified Blake Moreau and his partner, for they couldn't comprehend what was happening around them. Right in front of his very face, people were dropping like flies. As Lord Nemesis and his higher thugs pumped and released nerve gas into the Pentagon, 20,000 employees died instantly. No one in the Pentagon was exempted as the chief of police and his partner in a frantic effort tried to help their colleagues but to no avail. Everybody around them was dying and right in front of them was Lord Nemesis standing by his hired thugs and telling the chief of police not to bother for he couldn't save any of them because he pumped nerve gas through the building of the Pentagon. Blake Moreau and his partner Sergeant Lee began to shoot at them but again to no avail for Lord Nemesis was protected by a bulletproof glass shielding him and his men as he has complete control of the computerized system of the pentagon who told him that the reason he was alive was that this morning he had sneaked in antidotes to their morning coffee and had promised that he would surely die at the appointed time given the nemesis not only killed 20,000 employees of the pentagon but he also hacked into the system and spread every secret of the pentagon all over the internet plus the nuclear codes. Blake Marrow was livid as he promised to bury Matthew Anderson. But as usual, Lord Nemesis taunted the chief of police for being incompetent and not smart enough to apprehend him. And this was a massive defeat for Blake Moreau. So at this point, the chief of police decided to change his strategy for chasing after Lord Nemesis will be time wasted and trying to wiretap the whole of the city to get a slip up was also a waste of time. The best next thing is to give in to Lord Nemesis Nemesis's desire, more like throwing a bait to a fish in the river. Now at home, things went rosy, for the chief of police had had to divide his family into different locations in fear that Lord Nemesis doesn't get to them. And the news was this four-year-old girl needed a heart transplant, and lucky enough for the girl, a heart was found, and the operation was supposed to take place. But unfortunately for the four-year-old girl, Lord Nemesis went and stole the heart as expected. This was a bait to lure out Lord Nemesis from his hiding, since his whereabouts is difficult to ascertain. And before Lord Nemesis could know what was happening, there were police forces everywhere. To his dismay, helicopters were tailing him close as he was fired upon from every possible angle in the car he was driving in. There was no escape, there were roadblocks, and the police force was ready and well prepared for Lord Nemesis. The police force didn't consider that Lord Nemesis is no ordinary criminal, for in this situation, a hardened criminal would have given up and waved the white flag. Not taking any chances, Lord Nemesis mechanically ripped his car in two by minimizing it into a super bike as he jumped in the air and fired upon those police cars and officers standing in his way. He killed them 
all as the explosion was enormous. Still, he was being chased by helicopters from the air that had blocked him near a river, believing that they had trapped him and he had nowhere to go. But as I said before, Lord Nemesis is no ordinary criminal. In a blink of an eye, not expecting it, Lord Nemesis used his super bike to project himself by backflipping into the air while holding a rocket launcher as he fired at the helicopter and before they knew what hit them, it was over as the aircraft exploded in mid-air. Lord Nemesis dived into the river. He swam deep beneath the waters as he found a tunnel that led to the city's underground with the heart transplant in hand. Using a flashlight, it was easy for him to navigate where he was going and at the same time was communicating with his hired thug called Gas Pipe, telling him to buy more cars from his dealership and that he should remember to feed the President of the United States of America for he needs him alive for the appointed time he will eliminate the Chief of Police, Blake Moreau. Finally, he asked Gas Pipe if he had located the whereabouts of Blake Moreau's children but the answer was negative. Even Johnny, one of his hired thugs, couldn't find them. Thinking he had escaped the wrath of the police, Lord Nemesis climbed out of one of the manholes on the street with a heart transplant in hand and to his dismay, he was surrounded by the police force with no escape for him as he was trapped and cornered. And before he could move a muscle, Blake Moreau knocked his jaw out with the butt of his gun. Blake Moreau let Lord Nemesis understand that the heart he was carrying around with him was a pig's heart and that there was a tracking device which was how they located where he is and that he is not as bright as he makes out to be. Lord Nemesis, who was never shot for words, relentlessly told Blake Moreau that this was all his plans and everything was falling into place just like he had orchestrated.